SpaceX Starlink, a broadband alien invasion. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. We have a little bit of fireside today. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX and astronomy. So it's kind of like photo, video, and tech all together, I suppose. Astronomers have been complaining about all the satellites in the night sky, and rightfully so, for quite some time now. And there's a solution, all right? There is a solution to this alien invasion that we're seeing in the night sky. So I wanna go through a couple of articles. I kind of put them all together to give you all of the facts, as I always do, boil things down on this channel. And I wanna know what you think about it. Is it something that you are concerned about? Do you think that this solution is a really good solution? Do you think it's gonna help? What do you think about all of the factors that are going into this and what will be the outcome? I'll give you my thoughts on it when we're done with this, but most importantly, I wanna hear from you. Down below in the comment area, please put your thoughts, all right? And if you're shy, you don't wanna put something down there, that's fine, put an emoji down there. I'll be happy with that. At least I know that you're here watching the video. So before we get into this article, I just wanna say that if you enjoyed the video, consider throwing it a thumbs up, that's very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not, if you are, I appreciate that. Click this notification button here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. Matter of fact, you'll be notified if you are subscribed when I go live with the IFT7 launch. Now, it was supposed to happen a couple of days from now, but they pushed it back. So we'll get into that in another video, but hang out with me. Also, if you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right down here. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. The video's still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out, they're free just for you being here. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. And finally, finally, all this selfish promotion that I always do at the beginning of these videos, just fast forward. Finally, when you're done watching this video, check out all of my Starlink coverage. I did a whole bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course, the why behind all of it. I'll put a link over here, don't click on it yet. There's almost 400 videos that I've put together on SpaceX Starlink so far. So check those out, once again, when you're done watching this video. The Alien Invaders. You might not see them with your bare eyes, but in the realm of astrophotography, the streaks of light from SpaceX Starlink satellites are unmistakable. They've become the silent invaders of our night sky, but what if I told you that there is a plan to make them nearly invisible? SpaceX's ingenious solution. SpaceX has a new trick up its sleeve, bringing satellites closer to Earth. They've pitched the idea to the FCC to lower the satellites from 550 kilometers to 350 kilometers. This isn't about hiding the satellites, it's about a 60% reduction in their appearance in astronomical images, according to their analysis. The Science of Going Low So why does this work? At these lower altitudes, satellites zip across the sky faster and spend less time above the horizon from any one point on Earth. Astronomer Jonathan McDowell noted, quote, the higher the satellite, the more likely it is to catch sunlight. At 350 kilometers, they are more often in Earth's shadow, lessening their reflection. Beyond the stars, a quantum leap in speed. Moving satellites from 550 kilometers to 350 kilometers dramatically reduces latency. While fiber optics boast latency of one to eight milliseconds, SpaceX Starlink at 350 kilometers can potentially achieve 10 milliseconds, a significant improvement from 20 to 40 milliseconds at 550 kilometers. This isn't fiber speed, but it is a game changer for satellite internet, potentially doubling data transmission speeds. Imagine streaming, gaming, or video calls with significantly reduced latency, even in the most remote areas. Satellite lifespan and orbital dynamics. Lowering the orbit isn't just about speed, it's also about sustainability. Satellites at 350 kilometers experience more atmospheric drag, which naturally pulls them back to Earth over time, reducing space debris. This means a satellite's lifespan might decrease, but it also ensures that they don't linger in space as junk. 
SpaceX estimates at this altitude the satellites could last around five years before deorbiting, compared to potentially longer at higher altitudes, but with the benefit of self-cleaning LEO, or low Earth orbit. That's a really good point. The brightness catch, speed versus shine. Here's the twist. Lower orbits can make satellites brighter if they do catch sunlight. However, SpaceX suggests this brightness is only slightly increased due to how fast these satellites move and the additional time they spend in the Earth's shadow. That's a good point. Now, before I go any further, I put a little side note into this because people are like, well, how fast are they actually traveling? How much faster will they be traveling? So the current SpaceX Starlink satellites at 550 kilometers relative are traveling at 17,200 miles per hour. At 350 kilometers, 200 kilometers closer to Earth, they're gonna be traveling about 350 to 400 kilometers faster. So let's make it 17,600 miles per hour. So once again, they will be above us for a shorter period of time, but since they are closer to the Earth, they're gonna be in the Earth's shadow for a longer period of time. Does that make sense? Anyways, the article continues. Collaborative efforts. SpaceX isn't flying solo on this. They're working with the U.S. National Science Foundation to ensure this move benefits astronomy. The NSF agrees that lower orbits could make satellites less intrusive in long exposure telescope images, although they warn of potential brightness during twilight. The future of the night sky. Right now, SpaceX can operate 400 satellites at this altitude, but their vision extends to 7,500 or even 30,000. This could mean a clearer sky for astronomers and faster internet for all, but it's a tightrope walk between technological advancement and preserving our night sky. A cosmic balancing act. By reducing latency, enhancing internet speeds, and minimizing their celestial footprint, they're navigating a delicate balance between human progress and the preservation of our cosmic heritage. As we move forward, the challenge remains to ensure our digital advancements do not eclipse the natural wonders above. That is a great statement. Absolutely a great statement. Sometimes I wonder how many satellites are enough and are we going to get to a point where we're just encapsulating the entire planet with satellites, right? And eventually space junk if they do not deorbit. Now, I really like this idea, moving the satellites down to 350 kilometers instead of 550, because there's a plethora of goodness that's involved here. It's not just a little bit right? We're seeing that lowering the orbit is going to provide faster speeds. It's going to provide lower latency. The satellites are going to be in shadow, in the Earth's shadow, for a longer period of time. The satellites are going to also move faster across the sky, so they're not there as long. There is a lot that's going on here, right? So, I think all in all, this is going to be a good thing. And I'm glad that the FCC said it's okay. I'm glad that they're working with NSF. There's a lot of people that are working together to make astronomy great again. Because as a professional photographer, I didn't just do celebrity work. I also did the night sky. I have a 10 and a 12 inch telescope that I used to take photos with. I really enjoy it. But when there's satellites coming across the sky and you're doing a long exposure, you're going to see these light streaks in your image. And then you have to go back in post-production and remove those light streaks. It's kind of a pain in the ass. It is basically photobombing all of your work, right? So I think that this is great. The other thing that they really should have dug into a little bit deeper here is that it's self-cleaning. What do I mean? Basically by being closer to Earth and adding atmospheric drag to these satellites, they're going to be up there for a shorter period of time. So instead of it being five to eight years, five to 10 years, it's probably gonna be more like three to five years. And then they're no longer going to have enough propulsion on board to keep them at that distance. And they're gonna finally drag back into the atmosphere and they're gonna burn up. Once again, it is a self-cleaning altitude, let's say. Whereas when you put something in geo at 36, thousand kilometers in comparison to 350 kilometers at 36,000 kilometers those satellites basically turn into space junk when they're no longer operational 
That is a problem to me. I really like this. I think that all nations, all countries, all companies should think about putting or placing satellites at these lower orbital distances from the planet. I think it just simply makes sense. Now with SpaceX, it's not really a big deal for them because they're gonna have Starship on board soon and they're gonna be able to put hundreds of satellites every month into orbit with no problem. Other companies and other countries do not have that cadence to be able to put hundreds and hundreds of satellites per month into to orbit like SpaceX is doing even currently with their Falcon 9 program. But once we move from Falcon 9 to the Starship, it's gonna be even more. Everything's going to exponentiate. So we'll see what ends up happening. Once again, Starship 7, IFT7 is happening. It is postponed, but I will be covering it. So if you wanna hang out with me for the coverage, don't forget, click on that little button over here, that notification button, so when I go live for this event, you will be notified of it and you can join me. Please do so. Anyways, guys, I wanna hear from you down below. What do you think about all of this? Put your thoughts, or like I said before, just throw an emoji down there and I'm fine with that. Either which way. At least I know you made it to the end of the video. Anyways, throw the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever, I would appreciate that. Finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years and my shirts and my tees and all of my merchandise, my books. Pick something up, jchristina.com. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.